Okay, now we have um, the chairman of the Nez Perce Tribe, or Neptic Nez Perce Tribal Executive Committee, Samuel Penny, and um, I was really proud to see him and Shannon, uh, others, spearheading this Sama Orca Conference and pushing for the dam breaching and or dam removal. Uh, one thing I guess I'd like to say is people don't, um, I've never heard it mentioned too much, but those four lower Snake River dams were designed to be breached. Like they have an earthen part, they have a concrete part, so they can remove the earthen part and then allow the water to free, uh, flow better. And it's kind of like uh, David was saying about this water here, like this is all reservoir. Then you can, it, the reservoir goes way up by a soat and past the soat in a little ways. So it's all slack water and that's really detrimental to the salmon because the water is warm. Like this water is really warm compared to the clear water where it's free flowing. So um, like I said, I just appreciate the tribal council pushing this issue and the other tribes up and down the river pushing for it. So it's really nice to see. So here's Sam Penny. Well, Terry, it's to welcome everyone here this morning. As Julie mentioned, I first recall this issue of dam breaching came up before the Nesper Executive Committee in 99. So that was the very first time that we, one of the very first time that we start talking about dam breaching. But before I begin, you know, I'd like to thank Julian and the the uh, Nimi Pu Protecting the Environment and also the the carvers, the Healing of Tears carvers that have you know have carved this magnificent totem pole. And you know, I've been to Lemmy very many times, and you know, they have a rich history and culture and tradition there, and they've done this several times before on other either natural disasters or other issues that happened across this country and have been advocating for protection of sacred sites all across this country. So, you know, we commend them for all, all that they do. And I'd also like to just talk briefly about what was mentioned about, you know, these, these slack waters. We just had a discussion the other day about warm water temperatures and the effects it has on all anatomous fish, including, you know, lamprey and silhead. So right now, for those that don't know, that they're releasing, you know, a lot of water from Dorshak Dam because these slack waters are so warm that it's fatal to fish. So, you know, predators and all along the route of the migration of, of anatomous fish are, are in danger of extinction. So that's why we're at a critical point right now. And... The only way that we can get any action is to, as, Je as Julia mentioned, Orc and Salmon Summit last week, you know, to educate Northwest congressional delegations because right now they're in key positions within the United States Congress to take some action now. And when I read about the significance of this magnificent piece, you know, it's 2,800 mile journey across this country, and then it'll be at the uh, Smith, Smithsonian National Museum of American Indian, where it will be a reminder to the current administration and to future administrations as well as to Congress that you know, the plight of not only the, the salmon issue here in the Northwest, but the plight of indigenous people across this country and around the world. I think we've seen recently the issue of residential schools up in Canada, uh, the issue of boarding schools here in this country, you know, missing and murdered uh, indigenous women, uh, missing children. So just a number of things that happened across this country uh, with Native Americans. So we just hope that, you know, the journey of this totem will be safe as it was stated in the prayer. And that it will be a constant reminder to Congress and the general public that the indigenous people we're still here and we've we survived all the things that have, have happened to us and we'll continue to fight for the natural resources that we're all so dependent on. So I'd like to thank all of you for taking the time to be here with us today. I know we have other speakers that you know may go into more detail about you know the plight of the snake, but I just like to again thank all of you for being here with us today. Katsiayo. Thanks a lot. Katsiayo, Sam. So I'd like to have um 
Freddie and some of the, we have some of the people that actually carved this and are taking it around. Just come up and introduce yourself. So we, I think we first heard about it as I was talking to Becca and um, they had this other kind of display we're talking about bringing here where they put it somewhere. And then I talked to Freddie, we we're talking on about rights of nature, rights of the river, what's a tribe, our tribe passed the rights of the river. So we're still, we're working on rights of nature. So that's kind of a big topic right now. And so um, we started talking to them about bringing it here. And so it's pretty cool to see. And one thing that I really like about it because at the tribe with our kids every Wednesday during the school year, we have them come and we carved a canoe, uh, dugout canoe with four, 30 fourth and fifth graders. And we still work on paddle making. And so the kids are learning how to make paddles and carve. It's pretty cool. And uh, so then anyway, we're because this is the same type, you know, we're using wood, something from Mother Earth, nature that we're using as a symbol. Like with the canoe, the symbol was essentially that like right now we, we it's hard for the to go up the river just like we were riding canoes like it's really hard because the dams and it's really restricts just like the sand. we have trouble going up and down the river in a canoe i mean you can go through the locks but that's you got to have permission i think and all kinds of complicated stuff so but with the totem it's really nice i'm really grateful to have these people here and like to thank them for coming here and so here's freddie oh god don't hand me a mic come on round of applause for julian come on Come on, you could do better than that. It takes a lot of work to 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 do this work, and thank you, Julian. Just um, you know, there's a lot of your your elders and your ancestors that are standing behind you right now on the mountains, over in the other mountain behind you. We all have to remember that we come we we come from our ancestors. And we, we always got to acknowledge our ancestors. Uh, maybe you don't believe in them, and that's okay. But you, you, you always have to remember where you come from. Catherine Hummingbird, Miami, she said that. If you don't know where you come from, you don't know where you're going. So always remember where you come from. It doesn't matter your tribe, your continent, your language. You're red, white, black, or yellow. You're part of the human family. But always remember where you come from, you young people. Just want to thank, um, I want to call up uh, Uncle Edison again. And uh, this is the, the words of Sassiath, who can't be here, Jewel James. Uh, he sends his love and, and honor. He's, he's doing better for those of you that, that haven't heard he was at the our event yesterday so i want a round of applause for jewel he might be watching this somewhere Asiath, we're thinking of you sending our love from from up up river here and so i want to ask uh go emerson gorman i apologize I, I don't know your indian name um my indian name is Sokata. um my christian name's frederick lane I'm the 11th child of the late Vernon and Nancy Lane, both of Lummy. They always tell me, look up when you're speaking. You know, it's just those kind of teachings that I've experienced with uh, Uncle Doug and Uncle Emerson here. They're not my real uncles, for those of you. You know, a lot of us are orphans here today. And so when you lose your mom or your dad or your auntie, I have no more. I have just aunties in my life. Uh, and I always just honor the honor, you know, these loved ones that step in and be that parent, be that uncle. And, and so I, I just wanted to, to introduce uh, Uncle Emerson Gorman here. He's Jewel asked and request that we start each, each ceremony uh, in the peyote way with uncle. He's a, uh, very humble man, just joined us. So he's, this is day two for him. And we've been on this for 104 stops today. So give Uncle a round of applause, ACM. Aho, that's I again. Greetings to each and every one of you. Thank you for 
coming over and uh, taking part in this uh, sacred journey. Um, I have a name, Indian name, which is uh, I interpret it as a running warrior. And um, my English name is Emerson Gordon. And I, I come from a descendant of the youth and um, adopted into the Navajos, Dene. I'm from Arizona within those four sacred mountains. That's where I reside. And I made a journey up here two days ago so I could be able to go on this journey with you all, uh, with your thoughts, with your prayers and songs. And then uh, my brother, Jewel, I met him way back in 1979 through this uh, the prayers and songs and then some of the ceremonial things that I do. And I used to travel, you know, a lot. But nowadays, uh, I, I really don't travel much anymore. But uh, to this day, um, we've been through uh, a lot with our people, Jules and I. And then along the way, I met up with Freddie. And then over here, Doug, his wife. And then uh, the Carvers, too. House of Tears, Carvers. And uh, I carve with you every time when I have a chance, when I'm going through, uh, I traveled and uh, and I do and did some carving with, with my, my brother, Jewel. So uh, when you look around, you know, in various places where you travel, sometimes, you know, that uh, our elders, they always say that uh, this is a real significant place on this earth for us indigenous people. And also, uh, all these things, our surroundings, they're very sacred. That's what they say. And that's the way I believe it. So these trees that are here, it means a lot. There are ancestors from the generation time. In the past, they're still here with us. So this tree right here, the symbolic symbol that's our, on this uh, the, the, the totem here, it means a lot to me. Because uh, that's where the prayers and the songs, they're all here with us. And um, this pole here, offering was made for it. And then after that, it's been uh, carved out to where it could be recognized through the Indian nation, not just only the Indian nation, but uh, all through uh, other state, other, other uh, nationalities. So um, we're going to be uh, journeying with prayers and songs. And here, Freddie said, um, I'm going to do a prayer, what my brother recommended that I could be able to do, to travel to, with prayers. And, and my ancestors always said that, you know, never travel without prayers, songs. Always have that. And uh, you're being watched every day, every night. The, the spirits, you know, they listen to you. So wherever you go, there are spirits. So uh, that's the way I believe it. So I'm going to go ahead and make a prayer. And um, I want to enjoy all of you, your life, your beautiful life. So I want to say that much. And I, I thank the veterans, our warriors, So that way too. And the songs and the prayers that's been said too also. So I want to uh, go ahead and pray. I'm just, Go ahead and pray in my own language. Monastan, then gave one to you, Captain Jeffords of the Zen, then gave one to you, then gave one. Then the law, I don't the poor. Yet I keep needle, I don't get ya on the other arm, the same that I can take it in the then gave one. I had under the hot egg and hot heart, the same that I can get it on the yard of the poor. Oh, the eye, a corn and gave you fast and get the poor. The whole fate, the young, he can't out of the shoe, on the other side of the road. On the day I had a year, a 
Washington DC Thank you, each one of you. Hello, my name is Yet, and I am from the Lummi Nation, and I am a member of the House of Tears. My husband is Sitki Kadam, aka Doug James, and um, I'm just very happy to be here. I'll talk to you a little bit more, but at this time, we're just doing introduction, and it's so good to see all of you beautiful people here today. Heishka. Aichkochil to each and every one of you. Sitki Kerem Sanasnat. I am uh, really gratefully honored to be standing upon this land today. For the ancestors that walked this land before all of us to come and mix our tracks with, with the ancestors and all of you that are present today. The spirits are strong. We uh, come down off the line of uh, Chief Siath, of the Duwamish. We come off of our Lummi Nation. Our, uh, my brother Jewel really puts his hands out to each and every one of you. And he's thanking all of you that have uh, had a heart prayer for him. You know, he's uh, preparing to go through a surgery. But he wants to just raise his hands to all of us and of all of you that uh, we can continue the path that we're and do the work that's set before us. This is not our work. This is, uh, <clears throat> this is what the Lord put on our, our plate for us to do. So um, we're just following, following the spirit the best that we can. We um, run into oppositions from time to time. We run into walls, you know, spiritual walls. But, you know, we pick ourselves up and continue to move forward. We uh, lift each other up in prayer for protection. And so... I just want to say hi, Scott, to our elders that are here, to all the youth that are here. And it's to the youth that the baton is going to be passed down to. You know, I heard it said, you know, that the uh, voices that got to be heard today are your voices. With climate change coming on and everything else, you know, when we're long gone in dust, what are we going to pass the baton down to our seven, next seven generations to? What kind of lifestyle are they going to have? You know, so we're just asking that each and every one of us has an obligation to reach out and let your voice be heard. For those that don't have a voice, the orcas, the salmon, you know, they're all in dire straits. And it's up to us to uh, speak up for them. So it's our obligation, our sacred obligation to fulfill whatever we can do to make something right. Turn it around and put it in the right perspective to where we can share what our elders before us had to go to the river and retrieve that salmon at any given time our families were hungry. So with that, I want to say Heishka. Uh, we're asking the veterans to please come forward here for a moment. The veterans, could you please come forward? All you veterans, please. <laughs> I just got a little something that they want to hand out to you and um, to remember this day.
As they're doing this, I'd like to share a shaker song with you, CM. There's him. Oh, 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 CEM, Nostella Trust CEM. In 2013, we had a pastor come to our one of our gatherings. And this pastor, I asked him who sent him. I says, Tell me who sent you and why are you why are you here? And he says, This is um, God sent me, and he needed me to tell you this. He said, It's really, really important to pray for the healing of the land. If the land can heal, the people heal. I said, the Lord told me and wanted me to pass that on to all of us. You know, so pray for the healing of our land, you know, because we're going to be leaving it to our children. And so that uh, with that, you know, I just want to say hi to each and every one of the veterans once again, thanking you for, for standing up for each and every one of us and for our future generations. You know, you guys are way makers and our hands are out to you. Thank you. Oh, Sam. Give him a round of applause once again, Sam. Hi, Sam. I'm going to try to make mine incredibly brief. Um, <clears throat> my name is Duran uh, Montgomery. I've been uh, a key assistant to the whole crew. It's an incredible crew. Uh, and happy to say that I helped with the last layer of the poll. Uh, I was with them in the very beginning, and I'm going to stay with them to the very end. Uh, so thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, thank you, Julian, and all the, the hosts here. Thank you so much for having us. And thank you.
it is My name is Melanie. I come from a lineage of Eastern and Western European colonizers, settlers in South, Central, and North America. And in reaction to a spiritual crisis in our dominant culture, we're bringing out this painting to um, open a reflection around how do we build capacity to understand that we're all interconnected. And this is a question that Jewel James placed one of the master carvers, Sassiat, um, about three years ago, and, and it just kind of stuck. And so this tapestry that you'll see on the side, it's a knowledge exchange of different rituals and practices and costumes, things that you do, the small things that you do on your daily lives that gets you to build from the inside of your bones that understanding that we're connected with all. So you're more than welcome to come to just watch, witness, or paint by numbers, paint stories that we've collected from the events before, paint your own story, and put some color to your day. Thanks. Wow. He's a veteran. Is that why he came up here, Leroy? To get the... Okay, come on. He's a veteran. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. That's it. Maybe it just explain what you mean. Huh? Okay. We got um. When I was traveling, I went over to or Nooksack tribe. They had a kind of a, a conference out and um, about type deal, and I was over there and there, so I learned different um how they say thank you or so. Freddie's going to give us a little. Do you want us to? Now, Siam, Nishalacha, Siam, Sohila Kwanisanat, Tato, Tikaya, Siam, and Nishalacha, Salkatab, Salkatab, Sanisnat. It's true, my heart is glad to be here with each and every one of you, from the youngest to the oldest. My Indian name again is Sokeda. My Christian, my government name is Frederick Lane. Um, it's truly an honor to be here. I was sharing with youth when we were adjusting the totem pole earlier. Uh, I, I again want to extend my thanks to the to the men and the women that uh, that are helping with this work and that helped us do that little bit of work. And I was explaining how. You know, Western culture, we give a, you know, the crowd was wild, right? Well, I was explaining how in 2007, when we hosted our first in 72 years, and for those of you that don't understand the pot, it's a, it, it was a, it was a event that outlawed by the governments of Canada, the United States, and uh, but at the potlatch, we brought back Syed. 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 We raise our hands, and so that's by the end of the by the end of our potlatch, everybody was raising their hand, young and old. And um, but I just just explaining a little little bit. I want to thank Uncle Emerson for his prayer. Really glad he's here. Uh, I know Dr. Russo never came out. He's way in the back, right over there. Everybody turn that way and look at him. The guy in the black shirt with the... Hey, Sam, give him a round of applause. Dr. Russo's... The... You know, Bellingham, Washington, I was saying, was the home of the totem pole journey. I want to see that when the mayor... I wanted the mayor to do that for our hometown team. But it's been 20 years... Um, I know it's it's supposed to be in the low 90s today, uh, um, so hopefully we won't let you burn up too much. But as you can see, I'm really behind the scenes. I'm the road manager. I'm the pace car. I'm the blocker. I'm the as Jewel James would say. I know he's watching a scapegoat sometimes. Uh, but we just wanted to uh, first of all, we wanted to 
uh, have our members of the council here. If you could please stand or come forward. Uh, again, I, we apologize. We're trying to take care. Hate to say it, but, you know, we want to have, I don't like saying having ceremony and running, but uh, we, we just wanted to, to, to blanket our, our, our leaders here. Give them a round of applause, please, if you would. I, I just, yeah, a little louder, a little louder. Come on now, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay, it's okay to give a round of applause to, raise your hands now, he's, he's, yeah. You know, it's just these teachable moments that we, we want to pass on because this last year I was on council and uh, for the home team nomination, proud of our leaders, proud of our veterans, our youth, our, our community leaders. You know, we can't do this alone. I was a community leader before I became a tribal leader. And uh, for those of you that survived the pandemic, hint, hint, that's a joke. Uh, it, for us as tribal leaders, it, I call it a dog year. And, and if you can imagine, if you can imagine shutting your borders, shutting your businesses, making everybody hibernate, and doing it for their public health, doing it for the elders, doing it for your your children, your grandchildren, and the resistance that we as indigenous people have as, as leaders, the great chiefs, and, and, and most especially the, those women that stand behind the great chiefs. And it's the same, a lot of the leadership you know, it's it's thankless. I was called every name in the book. Trust me, and I know the book now. But, you know, that's not to say that I wouldn't do it again and that I wouldn't be doing this, this sacred work here, coming into the territory of our relatives as we stand together, to stand together, to speak for those who can't speak for themselves. Wart McDermott. Where they're posing probably the North America's largest lithium mine, and and it, the mercury mine ruined their ruined their uh, their river, their drinking water. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if one of those oil cars or one of those coal trains spill in your sacred river? Can you imagine? Whatever this plant is down here, I don't know what it is, but it doesn't smell good. You know, I couldn't, if they're putting that into the air, I couldn't imagine what they're putting into the sacred waters. But I guess I just, and now I just got to kind of hand it off again to the chairman here. And just to, I don't know, did we go through this already? Yay. <laughs> I'd like to thank you for the blanket. And I was mentioned to Shannon, but I forgot to acknowledge our, el our elders that are here with us today, and also the veterans that came forward. And also, we had a monthly meeting of our veterans yesterday, and we got to honor uh, one of our longtime uh, former councilmen, but elder that helps us with many of the ceremonies that, that we carry on through the Nespers War Memorial. It's just important that as you said, to take the time to uh, have these ceremonies, and we just, I just appreciate, appreciate everything you're doing. Cut out, yeah. Cut out, yeah. Nunya maniwa kia te awatis apawe. So yakas ki lahi naniwa at ina mo niik ti toke tim we we okpu so yapo tim ki wheeler. I'd like to just uh, uh, thank the Creator for this day today and and the sacred the sacred ground Alpawe uh, the Alpawe area the Red Wolf area and also uh, this just the the Creator for blessing us today uh, um, for walk, being able to walk this sacred ground and, and blessing us with a beautiful day and uh, uh, my my name Nimipu uh, Tim name we we oak boo is a is uh passed down from our father's side uh uh 
from Reverend William Wheeler, who was, uh, became a Presbyterian uh, reverend uh, back in the 1800s. And I carry that name with honor, and I'm privileged to be able to have that name. And it means it's a place far down the river, and it's reference to uh, the river and, and, and a place uh, our people uh, on our father's side grew up in the headwaters of of the Selway River, which is a tributary uh, into the Clearwater, into the Snake River. But uh, I would like to actually share some more thoughts on on uh, on dam breaching. But I would uh, defer to uh, my elders first uh, uh, opportunity to speak. Hey, Cassie, I, uh, my name is Arthur Broncho. I serve as the chaplain of the Desperate Executive Committee. And I've liked all the words I've heard this morning, especially the ones that we're here speaking for the ones that cannot speak, or salmon and orca. And I would also like to mention that our future generations, those yet unborn yet, are not able to speak yet. But time will come when we set an example today of what we're trying to do as people. When I say people, I mean all people. We're all human beings of this world. So with that, I would like to pass, out and pass this on to my uncle, my elder, I respect very much, Silas Whitman. That means from the North Star, uh, tied in through Cleveland Sapolis. Sapolis is the uh, whirlwind that comes from the star, the Lone Star. The name emanated from uh, my paternal side, who came from the El Poway. When he, separation was upon us, put to those who were surviving on the lands to either go to Lawe or to the change your ways. Difficult for Chief Timothy at the time to, he knew that in his heart, that the others wanted to remain free, but he knew we had to change. What happened then is that the largest element that joined Chief Joseph came from the
highly for sturgeon or for am lamprey. We lost all those species because they thought that they were providing a service to the public. They tore the dam down because it, it, it failed. We've had insult upon injury through the years when they proposed and got the money from Washington. The Federal Dam Commission wanted to build and flood the Imnaha, which is one of our Oregon rivers, the signature river, like the Selway is in Idaho. They proposed to dam that, flood the whole Imnaha Valley. I was dispatched then at that time. We didn't have a fishery department at that time, or, you know, the the attorneys that were there were contract attorneys. To go tell them that we're not going to support this and we will probably end up in court. They had the money. They had the wherewithal. But all of a sudden they thought and they prevailed on it because we told them, you're not only harming us, you're harming all the ranchers and the farmers. 